Welcome to your favorite tech show on television with Don Pedro Agambi, where we look at issues, trends, developments in the global ICT industry. We also play host to tech innovators, big thinkers, professionals, and the CEOs who are driving today's tech economy. Our tech personality of the week is Mr. Stanley Jacobs, Chief Executive Officer of Stambic IBTC Financial Services Limited. Stay with us. Nigerian payment ecosystem is an interesting one. You know, we, we, we've done so much. And maybe at some point we undertell our story. Quite a lot has happened with instant payments. You can see that we are leading the charge when it comes to instant payment in Africa. We still have some countries in the West still struggling to, to adopt instant payment. We've seen what's happening with agency banking about 1.4 million agents now in Nigeria. Um, we've seen what's happening across board when it comes to fintech. We've seen the number of unicorns that we have in Nigeria today. The, one of the recent unicorn uh, become, became a unicorn just within two to three years, right? When you compare that to about 17 years, it took one of the other big players to become a unicorn, you will see that the industry is taking an interesting shape. I think we have done very well. Um, I, but I think there is still a lot more work to do. When you see the the percentage of entire cash flow that um, has been digitized or that goes through digital um, in Nigeria, I think it's still very, very, very low. But in that space where we have covered, um, we have covered it extremely well. So a lot is being done to mitigate fraud. Almost every player, bank, fintech, financial service provider in Nigeria today have made and are making significant investment to combat fraud. Um, even some of our regulatory requirements forces you to put in place some architecture and infrastructure to fight fraud, to ensure cyber security. But you know, the more you continue to improve on these things, you find out that the, the cyber criminals are also not sleeping. They are working very hard to devise new ways of breaking into customers' accounts breaking into banks' portfolios. Um, but I think that at this point, we have to collectively agree that a key ingredient for fighting fraud is data. We need to acknowledge data. We need to respect the role of data in fighting fraud. Um, if you want to implement solution that will fight fraud, you must take learnings from um, someone who has done it before you and that has captured other scenarios so that we don't find out that some institutions with the higher maturity are more secure. The newer ones still have to go through the pains. You know that adage, they say, if you want to know the road, you follow the person that knows the road, right? So I think that we should see more matured organizations share data, share lessons learned, share experiences. I know the, the central bank has that mechanism for reporting fraud or cyber crime today, but we need to see institutions exchange this among themselves um, so that the, others that have not encountered it will brace up and ensure that their systems are enhanced to, to mitigate and fight um, this fraud. But overall, I think we are doing well compared to the volume of payments that, that passes through our systems in Nigeria. I don't think I agree with 90%. Uh, 
um, until I get some very hard facts to justify the percentage, um, I will not fully align with that. But yes, we have um, internal conspiracies that have led to some fraud that happened in the past. We've seen break-ins from outside. So I've seen um, internal collusion lead to fraud. <clears throat> I've seen external break-in lead to fraud. Uh, I don't think I have data to show that this is the percentage and 90% of it um, is internal. But clearly, um, in a market like Nigeria, where we are seeing institutions building solutions on a day-by-day -day basis, there are bound to be compromise. Compromise from the point of code writing, deployment, on, on test environment, on on, on production environment and even when these things get uh, to the to the hands of the customer one thing I would never rule out is the fact that there are complete sometimes complete insider activities that lead to this there are sometimes complete outsider activities that allows people to break into the system and sometimes there is a combination of the two right so but overall we just need to keep strengthening three things one is our system another one is our processes then the third one is our customer engagement and financial literacy the customer needs to know what to do and to also protect themselves yeah i think the tech sector is already doing quite a lot right um almost every tech institution whether it's a fintech a bank whatever it is now um, most banks are already tech companies now right they made investment i said that earlier that they have made significant investments to guarantee or ensure cyber security what i think we can do more as an industry is collaborate okay um inter-institutional co collaboration uh, we need to also see lots more of shared services because to be honest it is expensive to deploy fraud tools risk management solutions it is very expensive i've seen a scenario where um, it costs average cost to serve for a customer is five naira for a transaction but it goes up to as high as 15 naira because there's an additional 10 naira just to put a fraud tool on that transaction so I think we should also get to a stage where we can share. We can have shared infrastructure to manage fraud. So you can have 100, 200 organizations on one fraud prevention platform so that it reduces the cost um, to serve the customer. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the customer. CBN is the pilot. They have a role to play. They are doing so much. So I must really commend um, what the CBN is doing when it comes to policy formulation, uh, when it comes to even holding the stakeholders accountable. The CBN is doing a lot. Um, ensuring that your systems are up to date, your system as they should be. CBN is doing a lot. If you even go to CBN and if you go to CBN and you see the consumer protection, you see that they're also doing a lot in terms of en enlightening the customer, making channels available for the customer to report cases that have dragged for so long. You know, so I think the CBN is doing a lot. Helping the customer, helping the service providers, and also being that pivot that drives collaboration um, between the different stakeholders. So yes, they are doing a lot. Um, maybe if I'm asked to say what can they do more, maybe it's more around saying if it's possible, having part of the CBM budget uh, go into supporting the industry with building this cyber security infrastructure. Um, so maybe putting some money on ground so that it's easier and eventually sometimes doesn't translate into cost to serve for the customer. when there 
there's a reported fraud or an alleged fraud is that the bank or the financial service provider immediately goes into an investigation. They need to unravel what has happened in that scenario. Um, was the transaction properly authenticated? Authenticated because the central bank says you must have two-factor authentication uh, for a transaction. So if you say to me that um, someone has used my debit card in an ATM and it's not me, I need to check. One of the first things I'll see in an investigation is, did they use a PIN to take that money? If the answer is yes, thank God for ATMs, you will find out that I can also go and get a footage that shows who. And in many occasions where customers have said, banks, my money is missing, we saw that sometimes you see the footage is showing their children, showing their wives, showing people. So it's not in all cases that the financial institution is liable. Same thing, you see the same thing on e-commerce. When you do, uh, maybe they use the card online and you do some investigation down to the address where the things are delivered. You might find out that the customer knows the person who did that delivery. So that's where we begin to draw a line between when a customer has compromised um, their detail and when a bank is responsible. Because when we say a bank is responsible, what does it really mean? Okay, we have very few instances or rare occasions where a bank system will collapse and there will be fraud. The, the kind of mechanisms that the central bank have put in place will not allow that to happen. Okay, so it's a very rare occurrence that can never come in. And I don't think we've seen that recently. You know, so we, we have to do investigations. But I trust the frameworks that are on ground. Um, eventually, even when investigations show that the bank is liable, we've seen cases where banks refund. And when it says the customer is liable, we've seen cases where aggrieved customers even go as far as the CBA um, to say, I want you to be an umpire, see what's happening here um, with this bank. Um, there's always a way to manage it, but I, I don't agree that uh, it is in all cases that the bank is liable. Wow, that was our tech personality of the week, Mr. Stanley Jacob, Chief Executive Officer of Stambic IBTC Financial Services Limited. For comments and observations, reach us on the numbers and email now showing on your screen. You can also watch this on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production crew, thanks for watching. Same time, same station. I'll be back next time. I'll see you.